What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Power After Hours, your favorite power podcast. I'm your host, Jeff J. Chrissy's here, too. And we're here to recap Power Book 2, Ghost, Season 1, Episode 1, The Stranger. Y'all motherfuckers got me back here, man. <laughs> What's up, Chrissy? What's good, Jeff? It's Talk good to your to friends. Back. Talk to your friends because... <laughs> Thank you guys for helping me encourage Jeff to get here. Because as y'all know, he was not on board. Entrap, um, uh, coerce. I mean, it was not. Black I think everybody male. just liked our podcast. They want to see how we're going to take to this new, you know, new season of the new, I guess you can say, continuation. So, you know, it's right that we give it to the people. What's wrong with you? Whatever, man. Yeah, I, and I'm back, though. I'm back. <laughs> like, I, um, I'm not going to lie. I. At first, it was kicking and screaming, but I knew after I saw the first episode, I'd be like, "Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go back." Um, shout out to shout out to um, my homegirl MJ, who was like, after watching the first episode, "You can't tell me this doesn't deserve to be carried on the podcast." I was like, "All right, guys, we're back. Fuck." <laughs> so it's true. I told you, you have to give something at least three episodes, and if you after those three episodes, you're not feeling it, then we can discontinue. But I I thought that you would be ready after seeing. The first one. Yeah, I mean, I knew it. It's just, <laughs> I was being lazy, to be honest, and I, I didn't know. I, I'm not going to lie. We, we, we didn't even get into it now. We didn't know what to expect. They yeah. dropped, the, with the way the show ended, and all of the continuations, it felt like the entire fan base was on the fence about whether or not they wanted to actually continue, but you know, it's not like this is something that drags us kicking and screaming, right? Like, this is something that we we loved. We were fans about it first. So I don't have a problem with giving it a chance. And, well, you tell me after the first episode, you, you feel like we're going to be here the whole season or what? I think we're going to be here. I mean, I think that the cast is good enough to hold the show. And, and I think that what they've started with, the storyline, mm. I think it's going to hold us through, you know, with Method Man, Mary J. Blige, who we really didn't get to see that much of last night. So I know it's only going to get better as we continue to go through these episodes. I think we're going to be here. That's just me. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, off, off first rip. Oh, first rip, I'll say, yeah, I do think we're going to be here also. I do think we're going to be here also. Here's a couple of things that um, I'll give you my my first impressions, and then you let let us know, uh, us, be us in the whole community. Let us know um, what you think. So first off, this is power. They weren't lying when they said that this is power, power never ends. This is power, right? So it feels like it takes place a couple of weeks after um, or maybe a week after ghost is murdered. Right. Yep. So it's, it's a seamless continuation. It, it literally picks up, picks up where it left off. So I, I don't feel any jarring sense of, well, where are we now? I don't, I have an idea because we've been watching the whole last series. So right. that even from, well, I, I will ask you, what do you what do you think of them keeping the same theme song? I mean, it's a continuation. I, if you, I could see if it picked up. You know, Tariq had graduated college, and you know he was on his phase of where Ghost was. But we're here. We're here a week after what we you know we think Ghost death, and there's a it's it literally flows properly. Like Tariq is going to do what his mom told him to do. He's going to school. We're seeing scenes with him in college and how he's going to have to navigate that on top of dealing with his family life and, and his business. So I think it, I think it's just the right thing to do. I, it's also still called power guys. Like what, what did you want? I'm glad they didn't bring that Trey songs version. Then I would have been upset. They didn't want none, none of that smoke. I tell you that much. Yeah. They didn't want none of that smoke because some people was like, listen, I <laughs> I don't want to have yeah. any more controversy. If we're gonna keep the power thing, we're gonna keep the power yeah, thing. Yeah, keep it. It's not, I feel like it's like a soap opera. How it just always it's just I feel like that's the, what they're trying to do with it, where it just always is gonna continue on to the next storyline. Mm -hmm. Or if that's the case, you stick with the same song. You don't change it up every time. Yeah, no, nah, I'm good with it, and I like the way they tweaked the intro video. Yeah, and you see like the subtle differences. So it's the it the chess pieces are all throughout. So mm -hmm. that was a big thing about Tariq's arc when him and Effie, that whole thing of when she she yeah. had it, she had his piece captured his piece his piece was on the um ground the checkmate yep. right and um you see those chess pieces all throughout the uh, 
the intro intro video, you see the books that I, I like that cool thing where the book was flipping and it turned yep. into money. That was cool. And instead of Ghost walking out of truth, Tariq is walking up the stairs of his university. Right. So it's it's a cool it's a cool um flip on passing the reins. It's a flip on the good. It's a flip on the original, the OG video, and a passing of the torch officially yeah. from Ghost or Mari Hardwork be, being the lead to uh, Michael Rainey Jr. Tariq being the lead. So I think that's a good way to transition us into the new series. So I yeah, I, I, I thought I thought that was that was pretty cool. What did you think about what did you think about the episode overall? I mean, of course, this is the first episode with any show. Even though it's a continuation, we do have new players in this show. So we do kind of have to remember that part of it. Like I know I had mentioned to you last night that some of the acting wasn't where I expected it to be. But as I just said, what I said about it being a continuation, these guys, this is their first episode. A lot of them, I've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. So I have to realize that it's going to take time for them to catch up to what we're used to. Um, but overall, I thought the episode was really good. They introduced a whole new story arc, you know, with what we're going to see from Mary J. Blige and her team. So I really enjoyed it. It kept me intrigued, which is, you know, really hard for if y'all know me, y'all know I get bored really quick. So I was with it the whole time. You know, I was wondering what's Tasha going to say, like, you know, and what's Tariq going to do? And I love that we're actually getting to see how smart Tariq is. You know, they played us with Reyna being the smart twin. But now I think we're actually seeing Tariq come through with with the things that I didn't know he had. I was like, he ain't going to finish that book. Mm. And, you know, he's really smart. And I never realized that because they never really showed that side of Tariq in the first one. Right. And now they're really playing up his character. So I love it. Yeah. It, we got to remember, although this is a continuation, this is more or less a pilot episode. Yeah. For the most part. And, you know. Film, film and TV, Twitter don't don't come for me. I'm just saying, like it feels like a pilot episode. I don't. I, I guess it's the first episode of a new series, regardless of whether it was a, a spinoff. Right? They have the luxury of having continuation with Courtney Kemp, and they know what they want, so they're starting from a, a better place. But mm -hmm. you're gonna get world building. That's what you need to do in an opening episode of a series. You have to build the world. Where they benefit is the world is already built. So mm -hmm. now they're carving out new sections of the world that we didn't see yeah. and evolving the sections that we were familiar with. So there's two main two main story arcs running, right? Tariq and and adjusting to Stan's field and Tasha being in jail. So yeah. this whole this whole episode with with Tasha and trying to get out. I've never seen someone in, in, a, in an advantageous decision fumble, reclaim, fumble the bag, reclaim it again, and fumble with, with Tasha, you know? And, and with Tasha, she's she's been one of the brains behind the operation, whether she was had her hands completely in ghost work or not. Behind the scenes, she, she had a, a, a men's street smarts and book, yeah. book smarts too, but her pride is what ultimately led her to where we get to in the end. Right. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's, let's take it in stages. She, from the, from the last episode, from the last episode of, of book one, right. She told him, go to school, take care of yourself. This is, this is what is needed to, we need you to do. I'm going to handle myself in here. You handle yourself there. If it's one thing we know about Tariq, Tariq don't listen. So he's yep. going to try to get his mom out, try to do everything that that that's needed to do. But Tasha is working with Tamika. She's working with Tamika in order Tamika Washington in order to to get out. And it seems like it seems like she she has everything going for her. Yeah. But because she would ultimately have to give up Tariq that's where her conflict arises. Yeah, it was really, like every time I thought she was about to get out, I was like, oh, so she's not going to spend the whole season 
in jail because they really have been saying Tasha going to be in jail. So I was like, okay, so we get now early. And then they would bring up something else. And I was like, Ooh. and we really got to see how hard the DNC is working behind the scenes to make sure that ghost is never found out. He right. will always be James St. Patrick. And they're going to make sure that it stays that way. So I thought that was just a twist that I didn't see coming. I thought that once he was dead, they were just, done but i guess because they endorsed him they have to do that part of the the thing um but seeing tasha have to go through that with tamika with the public defender and then you know now with i don't know his i call him method man yo i don't even know his name on the show and that's sad because he'll always be method man davis to me. davis mclean that's yeah name. yeah davis um love him i love his role and what he's doing so you know now that she's working with him of course there's going to have to be a lot of scenes in the courtroom, but it's crazy to me that Tasha is now being tried for what ghost has done his past. Essentially. She cannot escape ghosts, no matter how hard she tries. None of them can. Right. And she spent how many seasons trying to, and here she is in a whole different situation with him dead. And she's still fighting against him. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and the fact is, think about how they had it set up. You had political pressure on, on one end to to not have his past or anything relitigated or any new any new <laughs> information that could damage his reputation and then by extension damage the DNC and, and the governor's attempt to um to to get elected. It could they don't want because remember that that's when they flipped from Tate to to um his opponent can't remember the, the woman's name but. They need to get her elected. She still needs to win. Yeah. She still needs to win. So if if oh, matter of fact, I'm lying because Tate ended up ended up getting her out of here at the end. Yeah, Tate at the end. Yeah. Right. And we saw so, him in the preview. So he'll be there. So yeah. now he's the one that's that's yeah. getting there. So they, there's so many connections. They wanna they wanna squash that case before it can get big. So they got that. Then, you know, uh Tamika is playing the 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 angle that she was a, a battered wife, um, someone who was under duress the entire marriage from somebody who had a criminal empire. And it's funny that even the judge is like, you know, he was he was tried and and found and exonerated of that. He's like, well, you didn't know, you don't you don't know this. We're we're ready, we're ready to blow it all up, basically. Yeah. Tamika's like, we're blowing this whole shit up, what y'all want to do. And then when they're having those conversations with the DA, I thought it was interesting when she's bringing out all the pictures of people who yep. have been killed, and one of them was Lakeisha. And, Which and, I thought was nuts. Right, right. So she's looking at those pictures, and Tamika's basically pinning them, pinning them all on Ghost. And is saying, yo, if you don't want this to come out, you're going to cut you're gonna yep. cut my, my, um, my client a deal. And she gets... The best deal, like you go from almost life in prison yeah. to getting three or four years probation, and all you right. and, and you know the whole point was what she had to do was implicate yeah. who it actually was who shot Ghost, which is Tariq, which is what she didn't want to do, and yeah. ends up firing. She ends up firing uh, Tamika. Because. Which was crazy. I was like, so Tamika, first of all, her character being back makes me so happy yes. because I love, I just love her. The conversations that she has with sex, you know, it was like ultimate black girl moment. You know, I do not know you. I, I don't like, know you. Yes! I was so proud of her in that moment. Cause I was like, we've all done that. We've all been there. So I was really happy that they brought her back. Cause she is that line, just like Sax said, well, she's not going to allow anyone to commit perjury. She, as much as she will go to bat for you, she's not going to allow you to lie on your name or her name. And she's always stood that firm on that, that topic. So I knew that there was going to be a problem with her and Tasha because Tasha's not going to tell the truth. You mm -hmm. know, she gave at this point, how many different names has she given that is still not Tariq? <laughs> so it's like, girl, what are we doing here? It's crazy. I love the fact that Sax is still stressing Tamika out in this series. Yo, he's been stressing her for like two seasons. <laughs> for like two seasons. Everyone, he stresses his own family out. Did you see that dinner with his family? Oh, we, we like get, we, yeah, we're we, we going to get, we going to definitely get into Sax because I think there's a lot of interesting, there's a lot of interesting moving parts that they put yeah. in subtly that I think is going to be a bigger part, bigger part of the series. So the main thing with Tasha is, she would she would have to give up Tariq because 
in the allocution, they they're going to ask her a question. Well, okay, we're giving you this deal. Who shot? Who shot? Ghost, yeah. right? This this damn question is back, right? Who shot? Who who shot? Who shot? Ghost, and because so first first she said that she did it, and yeah. and what's crazy is. I love the scene. I love the scene with the public defender. <laughs> like people, anybody who's associated, been through, or have any knowledge of the criminal justice system, yo, she went from <laughs> she went from the penthouse to the outhouse with yep. with that. Like this defender is swamp. She probably has fifteen other people that she has to deal with. The DA comes in because because originally, remember, originally she said I did it. And she yep. was getting the deal based on saying that she shot Ghost. DA comes back with the ballistics report. Whoever shot him is between 5'11 and 6'2. So it's definitely not you. You lied to us. You're getting 15 years probation. That's the only deal we're cutting. Right? Well, and, yeah. and and that's what and and that's where she knew she knew she was fucked because yep. she couldn't. And then what did she do? She said, yo, if you don't tell us who who really shot Ghost, then they, we're not cutting this deal. So she gives him she gives him Dre. So she she's this is the second time that they've discovered that she's lied because yeah. the the GSR the residue from the from the gunpowder wasn't on Dre when clothing. he um on, on his clothing. So yeah. they already found out. So that's a double lie that she had against her, and she's she's between a rock and the hard place. But before we go into how Davis McLean, aka Method Man, gets brought into this, my fave. Sax, right? Ugh. One look at his family, I totally get it now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It makes complete sense. Like they call he, him Nancy. The like, fact, the fact that they're calling him Nancy, yo, his family are might be bigger assholes than he is. Which I didn't think was possible. Yo, um, his sister that did the whole politically correct speech about the gender, the gender yeah. misclassification where you, with, I guess one of their sisters weren't there and he's like, what would yeah. she say? And he's like, if we miss, you know, if we misclassify him, that is, you know, like going through the whole, the whole speech on, on why it's wrong, why it's wrong to call him by a woman's name. Oh, perfect. It's like as it a so cis perfect. hetero white man, da, 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 da. and she locked it and she was like, how did I do? And like the whole family's like, yo, this is great. Like that, that is the epitome of having conversations with family that are just oh, assholes yeah. or say or say the worst things possible, and they demonstrate that they know right and wrong, but they still want to yeah. troll you. I loved it because at the end of the day, it was like, okay, so they finally get it, they gonna chill, and then they're like, they said, let's do the cheers, and they're all like to Nancy, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> we just went through this whole soliloquy about why we're not calling him Nancy, and y'all still do it. So I can see why Sax is the way that he is, because if you're getting that type of heat from your family, it, you can only be an asshole. Like, it, it's all that you can be. Right. Um. So, I, and then, they, you know, they treat other siblings as, as better than he is. He seems like the low man on the totem pole, because mm -hmm. they keep mentioning public service. Um, so that kind of bothered me a little bit. I was like, dang, okay. So he's not doing enough to live up to the name, I guess. Um, so I think we're going to have more scenes with his family because I think that's going to really play into this case that he's now going to be trying against Tasha. He always has something to prove and he wants oh. to prove that he's the best. And I see where it comes from now. And it's cool that they're, they're showing that. But I also got the sense that he was done. He was yeah. done with all of this, and it wasn't until seeing um, Mock and Stephen Ott there that he's like, "Yo, like, what the fuck? Like, why are y'all here?" And their their whole their whole entire goal is to keep the the case contained and put it on Tasha so that Ghost d isn't isn't implicated at all with the with the Kingpin statute. So if they prove that she she killed Ghost to maintain a criminal empire that somehow ghost didn't have a, a hand in, but crazy. this is the way that they bury, they bury Tasha. They bury any type of negative marks on ghost pass and put it all on somebody else. They needed the scapegoat, but Sachs wasn't really trying. He's like, yo, this is New York's case. This is not a federal case. Because he knows he can be pinned in it. That's right. the problem. If we don't know, they don't know that piece. 
that Tariq saw Saks in that building. Tamika knew Saks was in that building. She had that conversation with him as well. Right. You know, when they put you there, what is it that you know? So at the end of the day, Saks still has a problem. Yes, he's trying Tasha, but I don't think that's going to keep Tariq from pressing him about the fact that, bruh, we can put you in that building too. And you fit that height requirement. So what's, has, what's stopping you from having been the person? Right. And then she figures out that Sax and Tariq got together to get Tamika as the lawyer to get Tasha yep. off the case, which she figures out too. And she already, she already knew the vibe. Mind you, this whole ghost case is the reason why she doesn't have a job anymore. Yes. So she doesn't true. want any parts. That's why she she already knew the vibe. She knows that the um that that U.S. Uh, District Attorney's office is uh, toxic. It's uh, radioactive, and anybody yeah. who steps in there, and of course, being a black woman, she's like, "Yo, I ain't going down for these motherfuckers again. I'm good. I'm good. I was there. She fired me. In fact, now she did me a favor." Because yeah. had I kept going, I could have been disbarred. I, I I got out of that whole mess with my law license. Wait, they were going that you, yo, Ooh. you um um Mary's character uh, uh Mary's character said said that Monet. She said yeah. she said that in the um in in the previews for the season. Anybody around this kid either gets killed or gets uh, in, in jail. And Tamika Tamika realizes that, so that's why she didn't want she didn't want no parts, right? She didn't want no parts at all. So enter, enter. Okay, she gets fired. Enter Davis McLean. So what did you think? What did you think about his entrance as a character? Let's talk about. Let's talk about him real quick. Love him. I, I, I to this day, mm -hmm. I don't know how Method Man is able to play so many different characters and still remain Method Man. Like, bro, nothing about him changes. He is himself through and through. Um, I loved how Tariq did it because in the beginning you know he was like listen i need 500k that's what it's gonna be you come up with that then we'll talk he didn't even say i'll take he was like we'll talk so you know Tariq goes back in the game sees what he has to do as far as looking through his mom's stuff you know what i mean to find that one person who was running her you know her drugs while she was working the daycare so after finding all that i was really shocked that he, you know getting the money doing all that he still wanted nothing to do with this case i don't know what it is because Tariq is really smart. He's witty. He's street smart. And now we know he's actually extremely book smart. So it was interesting to me in how he gets him to do the case. He right. takes his buddy's phone, does the Instagram live, which I love how they tied that in because what person in college isn't on Instagram anyway? Right. So it well, Tariq ain't. Yeah, well, well Tariq ain't. Um, it felt real authentic to me to see that take place because that's like a natural thing that kids would do. Um, and it forces McLean, it forces Davis's hand to become the attorney because everyone's like, oh, it's going to be the biggest case of your career. Oh, this is so great. And he sees all the texts coming through and he's like, God damn it. No, like this kid, he, this kid is smarter than me. Like he outplayed me. Right. So I he, mean, so he knew cause Sax, Sax told him basically that yep. you got to get somebody who can, yep. who, who can convince anyone that your mom didn't do it. And he sees him in action. He sees him Definitely in action and says, this is what That's it is. And, and Davis knows who he is because clearly his father, he's like, you know, all American family. He's like, yo, I don't want no parts. You, you are not your parents. Don't let them define yep. you, whatever. And then when, when Tariq is like, yo, how much you want? He was like, yo, 500,000 liquid. What's up? And, and he's like, it's like Tariq. It's funny because Tariq is like, you don't know who I am. You don't know you don't what know I'm the, you, do. you clearly don't know the vibes because... Right say less like his look it was like say say less so you see that now one i guess I, i'm assuming now one of the angles is going to be that he's not selling for the sake of selling anymore no. now he's going to be selling to raise the money to to raise davis's fee so that he can pay off he could pay that off and get his mom out of jail so what does he do first he go he he looks through the books, finds Epiphany, the dancer from last season who was selling, yep. rolls up, rolls up on her and is like, yo, I, I need you to do this again. It's for my mom. Okay, cool. Get your own product. I thought it was funny when she was like, I gotta start watching the news. Yeah. I was like, so, bitch gotta start watching the news. Shit. I started screaming, yo. <laughs> it's like, where you where you been at? Where you been at? But um uh and then and then he goes to Effie to go yep. get the product and we not only do we get Effie back, they close the loop 
on a on a um on a cliffhanger or on, yep. on, on an open on an open plot thread. Whereas why why did she give him up? And she she, she explains it. Wrong. She explains yeah. it and says, "Hey, you were doing this because you wanted to. I was doing this because I had to. You did not have to sell those pills. I needed to to, to survive, so I took out my competition. Or something. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yo, this that was like a hobby. Like I needed this to survive, so I took out the competition. It's not personal. It's only business. But you know, she still, as she she said, and I believe." She still liked him, but yo, yeah. I got to make this money. So I made a decision. You in the game. So, you know, the game is the game. That's why Tariq took that product and said the game is the game. But that I left know. the door open. <laughs> that left the door open. It's kind of like now they're 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 even yeah. even to an extent, although she did get him kicked out of school. So I, there may be some more to pay, like to really bring it even. But yeah. that does leave the door open for them to have communication in the future. I'm glad they brought Effie back because I definitely felt like her and Tariq had some scenes that were worthy of giving us some more. And I think we even talked about that, maybe like our second to last podcast, hoping that they would figure that story line out. Because, you know, the chess piece, we all understood what that meant. But we did need Effie and Tariq to have that conversation about why it took place. So I'm happy they brought her back. I, you know, they didn't really show her too much in the previews for the season. So I'm not sure to the extent that we'll have Effie, because it seems like Tariq <laughs> is going to be having some fun in college this year, okay? I mean, it's college, bro. Like, this is, you know, it, it is it is, it is, is what it is. And I definitely I definitely want to want to get into that. Um, before we do, I'll say I still think Effie was talking to Monet from last... I, the, I think the connect that she had, Absolutely. it had to be Monet. Like, if, if, it, if it isn't... If it isn't that person, whoever that person is, I wonder if they're gonna close that loop too. Because yeah, who I was she? It was her. Who's her supplier? Who's her connect? Where is she getting these pills from? So I, I, I'm 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 wondering if they're going to close the loop on that because now we got the why, but we don't mm -hmm. get the who. We didn't get the who. So there's because still a back. They mentioned Monet as um towards the end when he's doing the search on the internet seems like that's a game. So I think they're, they're in a part of a gang. So I'm, I'm guessing she's the head of it. Um, I'm not sure they haven't really brought in drugs towards that yet, but I definitely do think we're, they're going to, they're going to make that connection somehow. Right. Um, I think it was Mo. I do. I think it was her. What did you think about, what did you think? I, I love them showing all the different aspects of Tariq's uh, school life. So wow. here's a question. Is he in college? I think so because they keep saying university. Right. He that is a college, right? Because yeah. him and his boy, because that was the one thing I was kind of hazy on because Choate is a is a high it was school. like a private school. That's a private yeah. high school. So I'm I'm figuring it's college because the the main the main thing with him is he has he cannot get his trust. Until, until he graduates uh, right. uh, graduates a four year university, right? right? So once he graduates that, he'll have access to his um to to his and inheritance, inheritance, right? Uh -huh. But then I, you know, I think it's easy. It's easy to explain it away because he got it. It's not really nepotism, but he got boosted in. He got boosted in by yeah, Simon, Stern. Simon Stern. Clearly got him in there because that's what Tasha went to Simon Stern about. You know, right. get him back in and you, and get you truth. can have truth. It, truth means nothing to me. So um, I think that's, they didn't really make that clear that it was him going to college, but I'm just assuming that's what we're doing here because with that, that basketball player getting the scholarship and they, you know, he made the thing that you're the reason why I'm, you know, going to be able to stay there. I right. think it's more for college than it is high school. Yeah. It's gotta be a high school. Cause if you got, if you need a well, let me not say that because yeah, yeah for some private, from some private here. high schools, you can get, a, you can get yeah. a scholarship to go. So, um, but yeah, uh, that meeting with Stern was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I literally had to text you as it was going on because I was I had to pause the TV because I was laughing. Simon Stern is the most jackass say anything that comes to my mind. I don't care what you think about me, person in the world. Like right. just and looked at him like, what? Where's the lie? Where's when he the was lie? like, when he was like, she was like, you, you know, we have a basketball player. We think you can help us. You like basketball? He's like, of course he likes basketball. <laughs> Looks at him like, like, yo, I liked it. You know, it's like that thin line between asshole and racism 
that yes. that a lot of rich people can walk because yeah. it's like so you don't <laughs> it's like you don't lie with, bro. tell it well, I, am you know? i lying wow well, you max i assume but i assumed right right <laughs> You sound like a Haitian dude right now. Stop, 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 stop. You sound your Haitian side came out. So you're so oh, like, so yeah. therefore, therefore, you like the sports. So tell her. <laughs> your Haitian coming out, bro. Yeah, it's bad. I, as he said that, I just I laughed so hard. I texted you because I literally I I wanted that line to be said today because it was so good. Um, and it, it could have went over a few people's heads, but it, that definitely is why he said it. Simon Stern is an asshole. Yeah. So I know that's why he said it. Um, but yeah, them giving Tariq this stipulation to stay at the school by having to essentially do double the work because they know this college athlete is not doing the work. Right. It's, it, that's common knowledge for most college athletes. They usually have somebody doing their stuff for them. So, you know, they're, not only does Tariq have to manage his own collegiate career for four years, he's now got to make sure this dude also gets through it for four years. And that's a heavy, heavy load to bear. Like, I don't, I could barely get myself through. So right. how he doing two people, I don't know. Right. He, so he, he's going to have to tutor, which basically is help do, do, all, do all his work to stay. So he's I being... That paper up. So Tariq is being extorted from all areas. You know what I mean? Like... Next. Davis is low key extorting him uh, with that price tag to yeah. to to represent his mom. Then Stern Stern is it got him in to tutor a dude, and and then and he's gonna get truth on top of it uh, yeah. once he graduates. So it's like yo, it's it's nuts how Tariq is literally caught in in um a all or nothing read. situation with this yeah. school, right? Um. <laughs> The, there's so many there's so many aspects about this that make me laugh because it's so college. First yeah. off, the fact that this man moved in to to Zeke's room and walks in on him smashing, I start I laugh so hard because I, I I saw I saw some like like minor complaints about certain things. And I want I want I want to touch on this for a second. Certain What's things that thing? people thought were dumb. That, that Tariq was doing. And I'm like, yo, either you were a lame in college or you didn't go to college. Because right. if I had a dollar for every story or experience where you walked in a room and people were yeah. having sex, I would have a lot of dollars. <laughs> every time. like, And I would be like, what the fuck? Why isn't the sock on the goddamn door? Like, what are we doing? Like, you you got to let me know what's popping off in the room. And it's broad <laughs> daylight, which isn't, which isn't all time. that like... You know what I'm saying? It isn't all of that uh, uh, abnormal, but yeah. I'm crying because <laughs> Tariq was like, oh, my bad, bro, and turned around and stayed in the room. <laughs> like, like, the like, you were just going to wait for him to finish. Like, oh, okay, that's what we doing? Yeah. Like, go outside. And, 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 hey, listen, if you've ever dormed with an athlete, either as a roommate yeah. or a sweet mate, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I, I, call, I would call that Wednesday. You feel me? Like, I would call that Wednesday. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I thought it was funny. It's like, he's imagine he's like, yo, give me 10 minutes. And then Tariq looks at me. He's like, <laughs> she was like, you better not be done soon. Like, I just thought that was funny. And, and Tariq, this was just his episode to walk it on people. Right. It gave Left and right. He just thing. kept doing it. Right. And, and when, he, when he went to... uh. Zeke's aunt's house, who ends up being yeah. Mary J's character Monet, he opens the door to the bathroom, and and uh, my man Kane, Kane is getting head in the bathroom. I'm like, yo, y'all don't lock no doors, but you know what? People don't lock doors. They I mean, don't lock doors. Is. Like for what? It, it, they 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 don't lock doors at all. Um, couple of things about couple of, one th other thing about Tariq. That man is the code switch king. He's one of the most fluent people on the store on the show. I think one of the things that he inherited from Ghost yep. is that that art of finesse. Yep. Like he has that he has he has cunning on a whole nother level where he knows exactly how to talk to you yep. in order to obtain his objective. He's you know, to achieve his objective. Smart. Like yeah. extreme. And I think that Ghost maybe even knew that, like, which is why he didn't want him in the game so bad. I think Ghost was privy to that before we are actually seeing it on the screen. Um, but it makes Ghost fight for him to just live that regular life even stronger because he knew how smart he was. And he was like, you can do anything, bruh. And we're seeing the real Tariq be shown. You know, he's doing this panel with three professors 
that's another thing. They kept calling them professors, which is very college, whereas college is, I mean, high right. school is more teachers. Um, I wasn't calling nobody in high school no damn professor. You want to be yeah, a professor? For what? Go be an adjunct. How about yeah, that? for what? <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, but, you know, he did. He does this thing the first time. While he didn't finish the book, what he was saying about the book made 100% sense. So much so that one of the guys was like, we got to give him another chance because he's, you know, give him a chance to finish the book. So Tariq is really showing that it wasn't just Raina who was the, the book smart twin. He's brilliant, like in a crazy way that he will be able to manage both of the, not just him, but Zeke's, you know, high school, like college work too. Right. I'm shocked. Like I didn't know Tariq was that smart. He, you know, I knew he was like cunning and mm -hmm. able to use words to get his way, but I didn't know that he was so intelligent, I guess you could say. Well, Man is that is a that is a measure of intelligence, right? Because you have to have a certain level, you you have to be smart in order to I, I guess there's raw inte intelligence yeah. and there's being clever, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like sagacity and intelligence and, and there's intersections with that. So there's some people who can wake up out of out of their sleep and understand a quadratic equation and they yeah. just got it. Some people in math, they just got it. Some people, the the high, the quote unquote high IQ people mm -hmm. who they just understand. They just know. Like there was when I was taking um I went to college for computer science. So there was a there was a theory theoretical linear 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 it was it linear math? It was it was linear something that I that I took, right? And um it was it was based off of it was it was based off of theor theoretical stuff for computer science. I don't know what it was about it. I felt like Neo in the Matrix. Everything the teacher everything the teacher put on the thing, I understood like that. That was probably Ooh. the easiest A I got in that field, and it was all based on theory. I just I just knew like I I would get like. He, he would have um, like extra credit stuff. And I just understood. It's like I looked at the paper. All I saw was zeros and ones. I, I just I just got it. Right. Oh, so there's a certain thing. amount of yeah. people, people. There are people who are like that with everything. Like that's like raw intelligence. Then there's people who are good at um retention and like memory. Memorizing. Yeah, that's so that's they, they can read a whole book. And then when they take yeah. the test, their their memory just works that way that they can apply what they learn because they literally see it in their mind. And then yeah. there's other people who have the intelligence to emotional intelligence. You're able yeah. to read people. You're empathetic. And you when you're put in a sit, that's what being shrewd is. You're, you're put in a situation and you know how to finesse it to your advantage. And I that's think he true. always had that. But Think about this. How many people we knew in, in school that didn't read the book but still passed passed with, with high with high grades, high right? Yeah. With, with, with high marks. Like there are people who are like that. And he couldn't finish it out of not not so much out of boredom, but just out of he, he you know, he, he has like 18 full time yeah, jobs. So and, going on. Yeah, yeah. And and I thought that I thought that, that I thought that, that was was important. That was important to highlight that he showed those flashes towards yeah. the end. And now in a in a collegiate environment, he's show, he's he's in full bloom. Yeah. With his with his skill set. I agree there. Yeah. I'm definitely I'll tell you, I was shocked a few times. I was like, damn, you know, as I, I thought he didn't finish the book again when he woke up that morning in his bed with the with the highlighter, you know, still open. I was like, damn, he didn't do it again. But then as he's explaining the book, I'm like, damn, like he even made his professors look at the book in a different light. You know, they we're looking for somebody who thought differently and they're getting that in Tariq. So I'm definitely looking to forward, you know, to how he's going to progress in those classes and also manage everything. But I think he's in a little bit over his head <laughs> with this Zeke situation. And, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of twist involved there because obviously he went there thinking it was a party, but there's, there's levels to this. Right. Exactly. There's levels to this. So the, the name of the episode is a stranger, right? Yeah. And, and here's here, it's based on the book that book that he's reading. Um, here's here's one thing that's that's interesting to me. When he originally reads the book and gets like two thirds of the way, and he says that the person the the main character doesn't uh, appeal to him because he feels like he feels like the dude he's just a murderer, right? Yeah. He's just a murderer. He doesn't understand why he's getting all that sympathy. But then when he reads the book the second time. And, and reads it through and he gives that speech about how 
the person the person in the book he knew the consequences of what he was doing he he knew he knew what would happen he made a decision and he made a decision based on himself and not what anybody else thought about him that he didn't let he didn't let the outside world control him that he he was able to make that decision and make that decision um with the murder and uh, accept all of the consequences right. i feel like he was talking about himself i he think was. the main the main character the main character in that stranger book is Tariq because he he was able to see himself in the character after he after he read the whole book but even when he was explaining it up to Lauren and she was like yeah that's what you should say that's what you should say to them like they want to see who the real you they want to see the real you and they want to see how how you interpreted the book based on who you are and who he was was somebody who was rebelling against what his father was doing literal product of his environment and it's ill when you have all these people you know it was it was cultural to hate Tariq but my my hot take with that is I feel like by the end of the season in the series he's going to make that face turn and people are going to actually like him for who he is. Yeah, and I think so. He wants the truth to be told. Yeah, that's the thing. Is Tariq is he wants the truth to be told. As he was talking about this book, I was like, dang, was this book written about him? Because it it was it's crazy how the worlds were parallel. You know what I mean? They were exactly the same thing. And as he's explaining, you know, this guy, there's no way you can kill without emotion. Like there has to be something there. I don't believe that you can just be you know, a killer with nothing behind it. There has to be a reason um, that makes you pull the trigger. Like, it was crazy to me because I'm thinking back, like, okay, when he comes to that scene with his father, what is it that really made him say, I'm going to pull this trigger? And it came down to you see him getting emotional when talking about, I wish we could go back to the times before you left mom for Angela. Like, it got really deep in that moment. And I think we're starting through this book to see what forced Tariq's hand to pull that trigger? What is it that really made him do it? And his anger stems from ghosts essentially leaving his mom. And that's when everything started to tumble. That's, if you think back, it all got worse from there on out. So I love how they're making that, you know, they're bringing that story together. We're, we, Ghost isn't even in this damn show and we still talking about him. Like, it's crazy. Um, but I'm happy that Tariq is getting to, learn more about himself through reading that book. I think he's understanding him so much more that he told his mom, I'm okay if you tell the truth. I will be all right. Just go ahead and let me live in my truth. His mom essentially is not letting him be who he is because she's holding that secret. When he, you know, he's ready for that to come out. I don't know that he's really ready, but he's saying that he's ready. So I think it's dope that they made that connection and I'm going to be interested to see at what point Tariq is going to stand up and say, I'm the one that killed my father. Cause he's going to tell somebody it's going to come out. So, so yeah. So one of the reasons why he's doing this canonical studies is because people who take those courses graduate in three years as opposed to four. So the quicker he graduates, the quicker he can get his inheritance. The other reason is because of Lauren, who may be one of his new love interests, the, the black girl that he meets on campus, who tells him about the studies, who's kind of like that buddy system guide that's that's telling him about what's uh, giving him like the uh, the the ro uh, the ro showing him the ropes of Stansfield. So I think I thought that was that was interesting. That was interesting, and and then you have. Diane, Ty Diane Tejada, who, um, who's part of Zeke's family, who's Monet's daughter. So they have that interaction when they first meet at the party. So you could tell that there's clearly ke chemistry and a, and a oh, yeah. connection there. So seeing where that is going for, um, going for, going forward. Um, That's gonna so, be a problem. right. So what did you, <laughs> what did you think? What's your first impressions of how they introduced Monet into this? I immediately thought, okay, she's a big deal because <laughs> as the fight is going on, you know what I mean? And she's like, I'm going to handle this. Everyone else is kind of like freaking out and she's stoic, calm, like 
just kind of like how I remember Ghost being, like no matter what was going on around him, he kept his cool. Like he never panicked. He didn't, you know what I mean? Right. So I thought that that was interesting to see a female in that role where nothing is really getting to her and she tells you she's going to handle it and we see how she handles it. You know what I mean? Like we see how she, I mean, that's her son, correct? Kane? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we see how she, you know, is able to have her family around her manipulate whatever she needs done. We see a cop come by. Obviously, he's in her bag, too. Um, so I'm looking at her as being the queen pin that they're pinning Tasha to be. So I love that correlation. I think we're going to see her doing a lot of things that we've seen ghosts do in the past. Um, but except she's not to me, doesn't seem like she's getting her hands dirty. It's never right. going to actually be her. It's going to be somebody that, you know she hires out or pays to do it for her kind of like um tommy was to ghost mm -hmm. so i'm interested to see how that plays out through the season i definitely think she's going to be able to read bullshit she's going to see through Tariq very easily he's going to you know do his little finesse she may play it in front of him that yeah i get it but in the background she's going to be doing her own investigation on him trust and believe right. so i think Tariq is in over his head when it comes to monet one of the things that i one of the things that i love about how they one of the things that I love about what how they introduced Monet was how she comes out and shuts down that fight between Kane and, yeah. and, and Homeboy, Homeboy who whose girl was in the bathroom with Kane, right? Woo. So she shuts it down and she's like, "Yo, get out of here!" What it like? She tells Zeke to get out to go in the house because he's more he's important to the family. Like that yeah. that's the classic drug dealer gangster telling the smart kids on the block go to school get off the corner you don't need to be here go get your education this ain't this is a normal right right, we right. Need you to make us look like we, we're just a normal family yeah. i'm doing this be we're doing this because we have to you're yeah. you're the best of us so you need to get the hell out of here and we ain't trying to explain to your moms why you not around anymore type shit so yeah. go right and then dude leaves and Kane is like, yo, you know, you know, he's coming, you know, he's coming back. Yeah. Right. And, um, and he's like, yo, no, you gonna handle it. And, and Monet, it, from what it seems from what Diane was telling Tariq, they have a history, like their family was part, was into something, you know, they're black and Puerto Rican and they're the, the the father's in the father's in for murder and, and drug yeah. dealing so it looks like monet either was always the brains or took over the reins for from when he went in jail so it's almost like that 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 you you think about it right uh uh, uh um a black two two husband and wife one black one puerto rican involved in illegal activity it's kind of like a parallel to ghost and and angie almost and what they would have been oh, wow. what they would have been had had that in in one reality if they would have actually worked out mm -hmm. um and now monet she seems like she has a connection with nypd because when they pulled up on on there he went up to her not on some like excuse me as i've heard a disturbance so you have a call he's just like yo is everything all right like, like he's like he came concerned and she pulled him to the side and then you see afterwards they took care of dude in the random in the random um, uh, apartment building or wherever the case they place they were they they we got our first we got our first death in, yeah. in in there so you see and she's cold with it sent her son wiping off the blood yeah. she's cold with it I I need to see I want to see her a little bit more with like more lines or whatever to get a grasp on how she's gonna handle the character but I mean yeah. I've seen Mary act like I don't have an issue like I don't think we're gonna have an issue i just want to see how she's giving it up in terms of her actual character on this show yeah it kind of reminded me of the, the i think it was like season one when ghost does that killing and you know tasha takes the shirt and she burns it it kind of reminded me of that type of situation except obviously that's her son um but it definitely took it back to like i think that was actually like the first episode but or one of the few, first few and i was like dang okay i see the different types of you know comparisons that they're trying to make here I do want to see more of her because I think she has a lot to offer. Like you said, she either was already in charge or she took over. To take over for a woman and a black woman is really hard to do in that game because the men usually have their second in command. So I'm assuming she may have always been the one in charge. You know what mm, I mean? Um, right. It'll be really interesting to see how that plays out, though, because I think we'll find out more. Tariq may be finding out more in by accident in dealing with the the girl who I think he's going to be using in the beginning just to get more information. Um, 
but we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. Tariq, I definitely think he's getting in over his head thinking that he can juggle multiple females when you're dealing with a family like that. Right. Well, I mean, let, let's not put it on him yet. He ain't juggling. He just... Bro, he's just... the previews. Who didn't see the previews? Who I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We, we, we don't... Maybe maybe it's just like yo one time thing you know what I'm saying and then he and then he gets about his books you know what I'm saying I'm not going I ain't going I ain't going to put that on a black man without seeing the rest of the episodes you feel me Did y'all see the previews I saw previews do not indicate complete future behavior all right babe like why are you Now when this happens I want y'all to remember this moment Peg I'm this just moment. saying I'll wear some change peg this moment because when I come back and I'm going to be like, what you said, Jeff? He's going to act like he don't remember. Y'all know how he do. He never remembers. So we'll see. Oh, y'all can run this back. I'm definitely going to act like I don't remember. Well, y'all yeah. already know the vibes. <laughs> like, I'm like, I know what? you like the back of my hand, bro. You uh, always act like you don't I'm remember. Like, I'm cool, like, though. what episode was that? Which, right. which one? What? That the was the last season? episode, number one. <laughs> wow, crazy. Yeah, man. They, they, they coming for me, bro. They coming for my head. All right, so let, let's fast travel. Let's fast travel to the end. Tasha gets Davis. Davis gets her the same deal. Davis tells her what Tariq said. Yo, don't be scared. Don't be scared. He Ooh. he's not scared of you. He, he he if you love him, you will do what you got to do to come home. So at that point, when they're setting it up, we're in we're in the court. Uh the dude uh, from the DNC is there. Sax is there. They're all there. They're ready to get the thing. I thought I said in my mind, I said who is she going to implicate? And it was two people for me. Because I said, yeah. there's no way she's going to say Tariq. I said, yeah. it's either going to be Sax. I thought it was going to be Sax. Or, or Tommy. Or the one she said. Yep, exactly. Uh, well, I said, th- when she said Tommy, when she when they asked her who was it and she said Tommy, I was like, wow, she really did it. Because they, they kind of did a, a good, they they did it in a in a great way where you know, you see Sax sit down and then yep. Ot comes and sits next to him. So he's kind of like, what what's, go- what's going on with this? <laughs> and then and then it all happens. And that whole part where they ask her, like, why would he kill his lifelong best friend? And then she goes before before because I told him to. And then and and and, and Meth is like, no, no. Yo, yo, he's trying to he's trying to rush through it. And yeah. then they do the bullshit where Sax comes through is like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to homegirl, um, the, the DA, and she drops the charges so that the feds can put the charges on Tasha. Shout, well, out, shout out to um, open her mouth. If she didn't open her mouth to say, I told him so, they wouldn't have had anything oh, to pin her on. She, you know what? She could have just said, he, she could have just said, you got to ask him. I don't yeah, know. But why would but, you say? Because I told him right. to. The moment he said that, I was like, and there's your, there's your queen pen. Queen and I was pen. like, oh. Yep. Tasha's there you go her foot in her mouth every single time that woman has yet to learn how to shut her mouth girl you had it you had it you were about to go home to yaz who is now she had a line she had a line yaz is damn near 14 years old now home to read i'm like girl what you was just three yesterday like, no it's like little nikki on it's, it's like little nikki on fresh prince she about to be she about to be our age by the time the series <laughs> Like, I don't understand. Like, this is not normal. Yo. This is supposed to be a week later. What are we doing here? Like, <laughs> yeah. Shout, shout out, shout out to um, shout out, shout out to my 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 uh, my good friend Nat, who's a lawyer, who said there's no way she she would have gone through the whole thing and not been prepared for that question. If what I'm thinking is did that that's like one of those TV TV things where. A lawyer would have been like, "All right, who are you gonna say?" And if they ask you why, what are you gonna say? So for her, for her to just like botch like that, either Davis dropped the ball, or this is gonna have to be like some type of uh, suspended reality, or she, or she went rogue on her own. But I just thought it was funny because I know lawyers would like, "What the fuck? What are you doing?" Because Tamika was preparing her for the question she was gonna get asked. Now Tamika was telling that her. They're going to ask you this question. You have to be ready with an answer that is not a lie. Right. So I think Davis may be coming in towards the end and telling her to just tell the truth. I think that is maybe why he didn't. I think Davis was actually under the the idea that she was going to say Tariq. Uh, Tariq. I think Davis, everyone knows Tariq did it at this point. Every time he opens his mouth, they're like, 
Like Tamika knows it's Tariq. Like they all know he did it, but it's like nobody wants to say it because uh. <laughs> so here we are again with Tasha opening her mouth. So I think maybe Davis was under the impression that she was going to say Tariq. And so I, I, I don't know. He definitely dropped the ball either yeah. way, but I think that's what happened. I really do. So he, he came on there very last minute, bro. Like very last minute. Right. So now we have it set up where, um, you know, Davis was like, yo, what don't I know about your mom? What are you not telling me? Like, what did you get me into? And he's like, yo, this is the biggest case of your biggest career. Case. If you if you win this, when you win this, you will be the biggest name. Like he's selling him on being Johnny Cochran, yep. basically. Yep. Like this is your Johnny Cochran moment. And then you'll be able to take down the whole U.S. attorney's office. So yep. you're in. And he's like, yeah, you're going to have to get me the rest of my money. So we have it set up. Tasha's going to be fighting against the 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 feds. Davis is gonna be Davis is gonna be representing her. Ta- Tariq is not only gonna have to pass school, he's going to have to raise the capital to fund Davis. And Sachs is once again in that position where if this doesn't, if he doesn't get a conviction, that radioactive district attorney's office is gonna get blown up again because he has to serve a bunch of masters. You saw when um the DA looked over and the DNC uh, dude was just like. Go ahead, do right. it. So that you could tell, like, I love how they inject the politics into it because it's real. It's, it's real. A lot of this real. stuff is a lot of this stuff, even from a local perspective, a lot of it is political because those are those are offices that get voted in. Yep, voted in. Those so are offices that get voted yep. in. So a lot of this, a lot of this shit is is political. So I, I think from this this opening episode, they laid the foundation for what yeah. we're gonna have going forward. I, I feel I feel good about it. Like I, I enjoyed it, man. Like I um I saw people on Twitter complaining about the fact that Tariq was running everywhere. And I'm like, fam, you never been to college? You were never in college? What's wrong with y'all? You never people? been late to a class? Like yes, he was running everywhere. Yes, because he was late and he kept being late. He was late he's to the to the New York where people don't really drive like in that situation, he's walking everywhere, taking the bus everywhere. He's not driving his car around the city like what are we doing Y'all i mean even on campus crazy stuff. i mean even on campus like yeah he's going to be doing a lot of running like that's just what it is and i'm like yo I, I don't know what your experience is like but i've ran for a class or 12 in my day so i, I don't know but but other than that what's up i said sometimes classes intersect so you gotta gotta hurry up and get to the other side of campus i that that didn't bother me that actually makes sense to me so I right I, I mean you know Hey, it, it's it's like I said, it's part of the college experience. And sometimes you just be running because you be late. Shit, you just be late. Like sometimes, yo, I, I, I can tell so many, so many, so many stories. But um, so are you? How are you feeling about the series overall? Like, what do you? What is your thoughts so far? What are you looking forward to? Uh, I'm actually really okay with it. I know towards the end of last season, uh, <laughs> I complained a lot about some of the things that were going on, but it was really because they weren't tying up loose ends. But now I'm seeing here in this first episode where they're making sense of some of the things that were left hanging in you know, the previous show. You really kind of have had to watch that to understand what's going on here. Um, I'm okay with what I'm seeing so far. I'm looking forward to seeing more of Mary's character, um, more of Meth's character, um, but also just more of who Tariq is like I, in that one episode, like I actually get him better now. Like I, you know, as witty as he is, I never took him as being the book smart one because they spent so many years pegging that as Raina, even after her death, you know? Right. Um, so I think it's interesting that we're getting to see his character evolve in this way, whereas we can see the similarities to ghost and where he's better than ghost was. So I'm looking forward to the show. I like it so far. Like I, I'm going into this not as critical um, as I was, you know, with where power was in their final season, just because this is the beginning again. So I'm just taking it in and letting it settle. So we'll see where we are in, you know, a few episodes if they are getting it running or if we're still stagnant, you know? Right. Now, I mean, I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm yeah. watching. I, I like like I said, you di- every show isn't going to be the the greatest show on earth right. like sometimes you watch shows f- just for entertainment and i think if it's one thing that power does power does entertain and, oh, yeah. and they, they give us what they give us the stuff we like to see while creating a show around it i'm interested in all of the 
the new characters and the outside characters. Like he, I, at first, we thought that they were gonna try to do a whole Tommy and Ghost thing with him and um yeah. homeboy Braden, who of course his family built an auditorium and a swimming pool because of course, yeah. and that's how he he's just like yo everybody. He's like everybody from my family goes here. Like we we yo when you have a building on the campus, there's no way they're rejecting you from the school. Yeah, like that's yeah. just yeah. what it is. Like that's a that's a whole mood, right? So I'm I'm interested to see him his relationship with Zeke and that yeah. family i like um uh jabari and and carrie milligram the two black uh guidance counselors or whatever or the, the professors yeah, that was dope. The, the two black professors who ended up advocating for him when he didn't when he didn't read the book i want to see that i want to know more about um monet and her family because yeah. these were That's some okay. of the organizations that were on the periphery of power like you got to think about yeah. it just because Ghost was the biggest doesn't mean he was the only one. So when all that stuff with the Serbs and and That's um what I was just about to say. Yeah, and Lobos was she and all that, that? she she yeah. might have been involved or she might have been staying outside and doing her thing in Queens. Yeah. Like just because they remember they were moving big weight. She may yeah. who knows what she's moving. Maybe she's been doing the college thing her whole thing uh, her whole time to stay away from that. Or maybe it's just some regular gang shit. We don't know. And that's the thing that's interesting. And I'm really, really interested. Of course, Meth and Mary for sure. But like Meth and Man, like he really intrigues me with this character, man. Like yeah, I believe him. I, I believe him. I believe him. Like that's the biggest thing for me. I believe him. So I'm, I'm, I'm in. Like y'all got me. I'm in. I'm all the way in. I'm excited. Uh, we have, we have some tweets. Oh, okay. People, y'all people was, shut it off. Y'all was live on Twitter last night. I know I watched it like a maybe 45 minutes earlier, but. Twitter was lit last night. You know, they, like you said, they can say a lot of things, but the fandom behind the show is powerful. Yes, no pun right. intended. Big power energy, big power energy for yeah. sure. Just some of the stuff and and of course we're at power after hours on Twitter. That's where we have a lot of our commentary for the show and a lot of our engagement. So if you ever want to get in discussion, hit us up there. Uh, Marcus Gilmore said power book, power book two goes all the flame emojis. Also the closing trailer for the upcoming episodes pulls you right in. I agree. I liked it because it just, it fed, it felt like Bode is fed up with Tariq, which, you know, mood, but it, it just is like, like I said, it, it just seems like they're setting it up for something really good. Yeah. Um, let's see who else, who else, uh, AKA mask season, AKA Rob the great. We back, we back hell yeah. Commentary, same intro song, question mark. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, if it ain't okay. broke, don't fix it. It's all right. Yeah. We didn't need nothing new. How you going to make Tarika tutor when he was in high school last week? I mean, kids been tutoring. Kids tutor all the time. Like, peer tutoring yeah. isn't nothing to think. And let's let's keep it real. This ain't as tutoring as much it is in indentured servitude to, to help them, their bottom but line. We don't know what his grades were. If his grades were that great in high school, that I mean, making him a tutor in college would be common sense. I mean, if he's a... You know, we know Reyna was a 4.0, but with as brilliant as we're seeing Tariq right now, we don't know what his GPA was. He may have been just a smart child. Yeah. Uh, I've had a tutor that's younger than me. The uh, the hell is canonical studies. So I looked this up and off the name, it sounded like it had to do with like biblical stuff. Okay. Like biblical biblical studies and like crit, yeah. crit, critique on, on that. I think that's what it is. It may... It may also be like a bigger literature type thing. Yeah. So that's my my cursory Google search that really brought it back. Effie, yep, Effie's back. Zeke's family looks lit as hell. Yeah, that party, that party was dope, man. That party looked that party looked like a, a Brooklyn or a Queens bur, uh, party house party. Like it was, it was really cool. It did look cool. It was a lot. Um, and it, what was Kane wearing? What was that like a a sweatsuit? What was them, the, yeah, what the hell? I was like, are we back? In the 80s with you. Oh, it's coming back. Don't don't sleep. Don't, don't the suits are coming back. Like the people have been rocking it again. It was fresh. I, I like I liked it. I like this suit. It was fresh. If you wear one, let me know. I would. I, I definitely would. Like I have no problem with that. Like, look, I I pull it I, off. I 100 believe. I'm not even gonna question. Not even I, mine might not be as baggy, but <gasps> um not that like people wear you wear your clothes, how you wear your clothes. If it was 20 years ago, I would have been like, yo, it, it might need to be bigger. Fuck that. But um <laughs> but but nah, nah his joint was fresh. Shout out to Woody McLean, Bobby Brown back. Bobby yeah, Brown I know. back. I was like, what? It was it was really cool. Like I'm saying, his character I think is gonna be the one that we between him and Monet. I think we're gonna get a lot out of him because just knowing that he's the right hand, the one that kills, we are gonna have a real story with that one there. 
and, yeah. and, and and shout out to uh uh shout out to power with the with the uh the tangential names so his name is kane and we had kane in mary's name is monet you know what i'm saying like oh, i love yeah. i love the way that it's like they have like little associations and stuff like that so to where you it's like if you if you look at the names you're kind of like hmm okay um interesting tommy question mark because i asked him to what the fuck there's still a murder charge huh yeah i don't know why yeah. of all the things the reasons you could have said why saying because he asked him to that automatically makes you the murderer so how could you get the same deal if that if if they had you as the murderer they wouldn't have gave you that deal they would have gave you a the, the original deal that she was going to give the 15 years if if she didn't give somebody up. So I, I don't know. She completely dumbed out. Tommy almost killed you last season. Since what we doing? You you don't realize he could have killed you right there. You naming him is a really big problem. You know Tommy's not going to take that lightly. Right. We all know that. 100%. So it's coming for her too. Susie wow. Henderson. New character intro. Amazing. Tariq's new journey of his life after Ghost. A roller coaster ride of excitement. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's We're getting a different side. We're getting a yeah. different side. Like this isn't going to be as straightforward murder, death, kill as the OG power was. But I, yeah. I, I, I would like them try to get more cerebral. I would like for them to explore this. This feels like a, a role playing game where you have the interesting ass side characters and side missions that build their own story. So by the time you get back to the main story, uh, I, I, I see it as them not putting the complete pressures of being a leading man on Michael Rainey Jr. Like he's still the North star of the show and the, and yeah. the, the axis that moves all the other parts, but right. everyone else, it, it's, it's a team. It's like, yeah. he's like the, the, the main star. He's like the, the head, right. And everybody else does their job and controls yeah. their worlds so that when they all come together, it works. Yeah. Right. And I think I think that I think that's what's most interesting of all, because it took us years in the original power to build up those main char those side character yeah, storylines. It took Tommy because that first season, I didn't remember. I didn't like him. I, I was not sold on his character. Right. But I was really firm in believing he went and took acting classes between season one and season two because he came back a completely different person, just more methodical with the words that he was using so i you know i'm i'm definitely interested in seeing the character development there too there's a lot of different places and pieces that are moving but i think it's all going to come together because i think they're taking what we said about what we didn't like in power and they're going to fix it here i think that's the plan so 100%. We'll see. all right shout out to bad girl bad girl in theory i can't get over ghost being dead please resurrect ghost ain't happening unless unless no, unless we're doing a love unless we're doing a lovecraft country co crossover that ain't happening uh please resurrect ghost but i'm loving Tariq's hustle he's using his head to slither like a snake the icing on the cake for me was seeing woody the great uh woody mclean kane uh serving up heat can't wait for the next episode yeah i, I thought it was cool I, I i think it's cool to see to see those guys um get those uh get those opportunities yeah. and they're, they're it's going to be it, it, it's going to be cool it's going to be really cool like i i think i think they they have something they have something they there do. um i i know a lot of people a lot of people initially had big criticisms on the writing of the episodes and all of that i didn't really have that this episode i mean once again it's a pilot so do with it with what you what you will but i everything seemed coherent i mean there's always going to be something that pisses you off but then again characters aren't written to be perfect they're written to be human so yep. when somebody does something stupid and you're like yo that's stupid it may not be a quote-unquote plot hole because if, if based on who their character are and who they act yeah characters do stupid things at times yeah. so I, I i i don't know but i i'm 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 optimistic i'm i'm excited yeah i think a character especially like you know zeke has a lot of room to grow obviously um, you know, I, like I said last night, the way he walked in the room, I was like, man, what's going on? But that's very real. After you explained to me, I was like, yeah, like freshman in college, like, you know, get it. So yeah, I think everybody needs to take a step back and just realize this is a pilot episode. Even though it's a continuation, we have to give them the room to grow. It's, it's the first episode of this season. So just give it time. Right. And I, like I said, I think if, if you like power in any way, shape or form, you'll like this episode. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like if you've been sure. following, if you watch the whole series, you're going to like this episode. And, and the one thing I, I remind people, yo, there's so much content out there. There's yep. so many shows. There's too many shows to be quite honest. There's so many shows out there that you should not feel like it's a chore to watch something. If you don't like it, there's nothing wrong right. with opting out. So, you know, I, I think for a lot of the fans of the show, they want something. They, they love the, they love the, air, the, um, they love the 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 world of power and they want to they want to live within it. And I think it's I think it's interesting. Now that I think about it, they're making they're keeping the connections to the Tate show and the Tommy show. The Tate show because they're bar- they're trying to bury Ghost Pass so that yeah. he can become governor and the Tommy show because Tommy's running to LA, but the minute they make it a federal case, it's a real thing. They're now. going, they're going, they can go look for him wherever, yeah. right? So he won't be as cozy on the West Coast as he was going to be. So yeah. they they're 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 connecting to the other books without being overbearing on, on it. And and with and with not with, with with without using like overworked, overused, cliche things. It goes within the flow of where the universe is. So mm-hmm. How they build on that to make the other shows and and think about it. If we get to a point, you know, given everything that's been going on with the pandemic and all of that, if we get to a point where they're going to be running concurrently, you may have crossover, crossover um, potential there. So has to, especially with Tommy. There's just no way you can't. (laughs) So it'll be interesting. Of course. Well, that that does. You got anything else on this? No, I'm just, I'm proud of you for being here, Jeff. Thank mm-hmm. you for watching and listening to all of us who wanted you here. Yes, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But I, I am here. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we're back. And I'm glad for everybody who's been with us on this Power After Hours journey. Power doesn't stop and neither does Power After Hours. Subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. And for this first season on YouTube, we're going to have audio and video for you to see us in our beautiful unique and captivating splendor you know what i'm saying we got the we got the baby we got the baby hairs we got the dimples we got pics we got we got nothing but juices and berries flowing right now and you can see us you know what i'm saying this this is how we do this is how we do okay so (laughs) this is this is what we're doing um subscribe to us uh, subscribe to the uh non-stop culture youtube channel that's where power after hours is housed listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us Power After Hours on Twitter. That's our that's our only social account because that's where the fans are and that's where we discuss. So that's where we will be. Chrissy, where can they find you on social? You can find me at Chrissy Bree everywhere you think about. Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, everywhere. I'm Chrissy Bree. Even if it ain't made yet, she got It'll one. Be there. Right. It'll be there. And I am on, I am Jeff J says on all social media. Follow us. Follow the account and follow along with power. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace.